Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about references in your Quarto book. So in my last video, I introduced Quarto books or using the Quarto publishing system for, uh, for writing the book format. And I talked a little bit about references there and how you can include those, but uh, I wanted to dive into that a little bit deeper here. So on the page that I'm showing you now, I have a rendered Quarto book like I produced last time with a few small changes, and I have a few other websites that I wanna show you. So uh, first, I would like to talk about citation styles. So there are many ways to do this. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with APA format or the Chicago Manual of Style format, something like that. And uh, the, the thing is though, there are just many, many others, and some journals, some, um, some publications, they have their own preferred style. And so what's really nice is, using a structured format for all of your references allows you to adapt that to whatever your publication outlet is. And uh, in this case, uh, we, we have some information on screen about uh, different citation styles. And so I mentioned that Quarto uses CMOS, but there is an entire group dedicated to citation styles. And they have uh, some files that you can download uh, that have those different styles encoded. So you can grab that file and then use it in your Quarto book to automatically format your references in those target styles. So uh, I, I made a note here, I'm using the apa.csl file from them, and then that will format my references in APA format. So uh, I'll walk through the nuts and bolts of how to do that in a moment. But it's just important to know that there are many of those out there. So briefly, this is the CSL homepage. You can go here and check that out. It's citationstyles.org. And then a link to uh, their, their GitHub repo called citation style language slash styles. They have all of these CSL files here. So this one is for the Academy of Management Review. We have uh, ACM SIGGRAPH, which is a special interest group in graphics. Uh, there's just so many different ones, but if you scroll through here, there's like 2,600 of these. If you scroll through, you can probably find something that's useful to you. And in this list is one called APA.CSL. There's different uh, types of uh, APA formatting, but that one seems to be the basic one, I guess. So I grabbed that. And the way that you would get one of these, let's just say you need the American Chemical Society format you can click on that file name, which brings you uh, to the file. And then if you look down here, you can see the code for that CSL file itself. And to get it, you need to go over to uh, these icons on the top right of that section and then click download raw file. And then that will get you the, uh, the CSL file. And then that file goes into uh, your folder with all of your Quarto book files, and then you can use it. So I would just put it at that top level there, and uh, and then you can reference that in your document. And I'll show you that in a moment. One other cool thing about using this type of system is that it allows you to keep all of your references in that structured format. And what's nice about that is that other publishers also use structured formatting for their references sometimes. Not everybody does this, and they sometimes have some different ways to do it, but there are many cases where it could be valuable to you to just download the citation because it's a real pain to find something you like, a good article that you want to use, a reference, and then you have to manually type the reference, especially into something like Word where you're just putting it into your bib there. Um, so here you're adding that reference to your bibliography, but in a much uh, less painful way. So as an example, let's just say that you are interested in using an article from the Journal of Geographical Sciences. And you find this article that's really cool. It's about the feasibility analysis of a double cropping system for the efficient use of farmland on China's lowest plateau. Great. That's the one you want. So you click on this article. And this is just specific to this uh, journal, but others do something similar. What you notice is the title, the authors, a lot of these are linked. And in many cases, you would type this in, but in this case, we have uh, a link to cite this article, which is great. And then if we look at it, 
you could copy and paste that text, but you can also download the citation. And then that will give you this RIS file, which we can uh, open up and take a look at. So what we're gonna do is use that information in our references, in our bibliography. Um, so let's go ahead and hop over to our studio. So again, if you watched my previous video, you'll be caught up to this point. Uh, but what I want to point out here is instead of the .bib format of a bibliography, I'm going to try this RIS format. It's a different type of format, um, but we can implement that here by just changing the file that we normally had. So we had references.bib. I made a new file called references.ris, and that's where I store all of those RIS entries, which I'll show you. And then below that, I have a new entry for CSL, and that just defines the uh, CSL file that I'm using, and that's the APA file I downloaded. So in my, uh, in my files list over here, you can see there's this APA.CSL file that I put in, and so we'll need that. The references.bib file is still there. Uh, I'm not using it but the new one is references.ris and I have those pulled up and I can show you what they look like. So uh, the references.bib, if you recall, has this at symbol and article and then these curly braces with all of that information in it. That is the same thing uh, functionally as the RIS format, but they're structured differently. So. In this case, I have a couple of uh, references that I grabbed from some other places. And the, the general structure is an abbreviation and then the, a dash and then the, the actual content. So I want to go back to what I had up on the page before. So let's just look at the differences between uh, the bibtech format, and which is .bib, and then the RIS format. And then we'll go back into uh, our studio and, and look at those. So again, we know there are different content or uh, citation styles, and now we're looking at the way that those structured entries are kept in your files. So one very common one, especially if you use LaTeX, is bibtech. And it's this at kind of format I talked about. There are several standard ways to do that. You can uh, you can do this for an article, for a book. It's a little bit different for each of these, but there's like 14 standard ways. Uh, it supports booklets, and then citations that are found in a book, in a collection, in proceedings from like a, a conference. And then you can do um, a manual. Like this one is R, a language for statistical computing. So it's just the, the manual for R and then uh, different types of documents from academia, like a master's or PhD thesis. There's one for miscellaneous, which can be used for anything. Uh, it's often used for websites or personal notes, stuff like that. Uh, and then there's the PhD thesis and the proceedings, tech reports, and then if you have anything that hasn't been published, there's one for unpublished. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Um, but they generally all look the same. And if you have your references structured this way, you can use that BibTeX style and, uh, and then bring them into Quarto very easily. And then another one is this RIS format, which according to Wikipedia, it's a standardized tag format developed by Research Information Systems Incorporated. And uh, many digital libraries like IEEE Explore, that's like engineering stuff, Scopus, ACM Portal, Science Direct, Springer Link, they all use this. So if you're interested in publishing in those uh, locations, then this could be something for you. And so a, a brief example of what that looks like is given here. And you saw a preview of that in my code. But um, the abbreviations are the, the type. So this is a journal. This is the author's name, the publication year, the date, the title. This is title uh, title one and two, basically. This is the, the primary and secondary title. 
And then we have starting page, ending page, volume. And then the last one, ER, is the end of the reference. And this is just telling the, the system that that entry is complete. And so the next one is the start of a new entry. So you can read up on the Wikipedia page. There are a lot more of these abbreviations. And you'll see some in the, uh, the ones that I copied that don't show up here. But essentially, it's a relatively easy to read format. The other one's not too bad either. Um, but you may find you prefer one over the other. And then, uh, let's see, next up on my summary page, there's not much, but I do use one of these references. And then uh, my references list is here. Now, I didn't use the one that I downloaded, um, but I do have a couple of references here that are in that RIS file. So uh, the ones that are here are by Nishi and Ren and all of the formatting that you see here was done automatically. So I didn't have to type any of this or link anything. And um, so let's go jump into our studio and take a look and see how that's done. So again, to review our Quarto file, uh, the, the YML file has a reference to the file where these references are kept. So I'm using references.ris in this case. And then again, I changed the formatting of the references to APA by defining the APA.CSL document. And I got that from that CSL repo in GitHub. Now, uh, I'm going to close out this references.bib. I'm not using it. It was just here for uh, comparison. So the references.riz file has, again, some of these that look familiar. Um, but it's basically the, the header info for your reference. This one actually contains a full abstract as well. So if you needed to pull that out, I suppose you could. And then the ID here is equivalent to that tag from that bib file. So if I need to reference this, I'll just use ren2023. And you can change those if you need to, but that's the one that was stored in the, uh, in the downloaded information. And here's that other one. There's a ton of authors on this one. And then uh, again, the reference is Nishi 2023. So these are complete. This is how they came from the download, which is really nice. It's not something you have to type. Uh, and then once you have them stored in this file, you can use them throughout your book or throughout your document. So when we render it, you know, we get that really nice looking references section in our, uh, in our final product. So uh, that's really it for today for this document. And uh, I hope you learned something about using references with Quarto books. And uh, go ahead and check out my other videos on Quarto if you, uh, you want to learn more about the publication system in other ways. Otherwise, uh, please like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and learned something. And consider subscribing to the channel for more information later. Thanks. Have a great week.